Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, as uh, was mentioned, I'm a human rights officer and the International Disability Alliance. The International Disability Alliance is, uh, of course, an alliance of 14 uh, members, eight of them uh, global members and six of them regional members. Uh, among them, just to mention a couple, there is Inclusion International, the World Federation of the Deaf, um, at the regional level, uh, the European Disability Forum uh, is also part of the Alliance. The Alliance has two offices, uh, one in Geneva, where I'm based, and uh, another one in New York. Both of the offices try to work before the UN uh, bodies. Uh, in Geneva, more to, in connection with the human rights uh, treaty bodies and other human rights related uh, mechanisms and in New York more related to uh, whatever happens at the UN level uh, in New York. For instance, uh, the following up of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, we work um, lobbying before those bodies, trying to influence their work from a disability perspective based on the CAPD. And another part of our work is uh, to support the organizations of persons with disabilities from the different countries coming up before uh, those, those bodies. In this presentation uh, now, in which I will try to go quickly through uh, the um, review process at the international level by the UN CAPD committee. To begin with, let's see what the uh, CAPD committee is and how it's composed, so we'll go briefly through this. This CPD committee is composed by 18 members who have a four-year uh, mandate and they're eligible for election. They serve, and this is very important, as independent experts. Therefore, they are not representing the state when they do their work. Um, and, of course, to keep uh, impartiality and independence of the member. For instance, when their country is going to be reviewed by the CPD committee, we'll see how, they do not take uh, part on the review. Then the convention establishes a set of criteria for the election of these members, uh, such as equitable geographical distribution, representation of principal legal systems, gender balance, participation of experts with disabilities. Nowadays, uh, some of these criteria, unfortunately, were not that taken into account in the last election. The committee counts with the um, 17 uh, men and one uh, woman, uh, which is a pity, of course, and uh, it's something uh, for organizations to try to lobby for uh, increased gender balance in the next election, that as a, as a full note. Um, so I clarify that because the picture that is projecting is from the previous composition of the committee. This committee has several functions. We will focus um, most on uh, the review in state, the function of reviewing state reports and adopting concluding observations. But I would also like to highlight that the committee also receives individual communications and issue views uh, through a document which is co uh, called um, views on uh, individual complaints uh, for those countries that have ratified the optional protocol. Therefore, as a recommendation, whenever you are calling for or campaigning for the ratification of the CAPD in Ireland, please also add and its optional protocol, just in case uh, anybody would forget. Uh, another function, uh, under this function, the committee till now issued 14, uh, 14 and they're about to publish more um, decisions on individual cases. Of course, this function has involves requirement. We are not planning to go into detail into that now. Another function is to undertake inquiries into state parties when there is a reliable information of grave and systematic violation of the convention. Uh, also a function that is uh, foreseen under the optional protocol. This, the, the 
more close example for you of this is the inquiry procedure uh, on the UK on the social uh, welfare system reform. I see one hand <coughs> trying to raise, but uh, we, we will have time for questions and answers a little bit later, I believe. Um, then the last um, fun two functions uh, projected in the screen, which are connected. Uh, the first one is whole thematic discussions, days of general discussion on certain topics, uh, most of the time articles, and uh, adopt general comments. Uh, usually the discussions are the step, uh, previous step to the developing and adoption of a general comment. A general comment uh, is a document in which the CPD committee elaborates on the content of one article of the convention or on one subject related to the convention, going much more in depth than the convention does in the, the letter of the article. Just take one article of the convention, you will see it probably takes, I don't know, 10 lines. Well, the general comment has around 12 pages. So that's a, a very good input for you uh, to, to try to study and try to uh, get to see what the committee has developed on uh, the different articles. Till now, there has been general comments on Article 12, equal recognition be before the law, on Article 9, accessibility, on Article 6, women and girls with disabilities, on Article 24, uh, right to inclusive education, and uh, nowadays the committee is working on general comments on Article 19 and on Article 5. We mentioned the functions, now we can see how the organizations uh, from, uh, from the national level and also the national human rights institutions uh, are welcome to participate uh, regarding the different functions. We mentioned, the, and many speakers mentioned, the, the possibility to submit alternative reports and to orally uh, brief the committee in Geneva uh, at certain moments. Then uh, organizations can also file individual communications and complaints, can also f provide information to initiate the, process, the processes of inquiry, and can participate and provide input for the development of general comments. Uh, I was mentioned before, but I, I, I recap on this. Since the moment of ratification, every state is obliged to submit a report within two years. Sometimes the states take longer, and sometimes some states <laughs> still, after the, this uh, delay has already passed, uh, still did not present the reports, which is a, a problem for the CAPD committee to address. Um, and the idea is that that initial report then, uh, and all the review process that we'll see, repeats itself as a cycle. Now in the screen I'm projecting the cycle of review of monitoring by the CIPD committee, which of course, its first step is the ratification. Then the state will have to submit an initial state report. Then the committee at certain point in, in time when it decides that the state will go through review, will adopt a document of, uh, which is called list of issues, which basically is a three or four pages document containing around 36, 35, 36 precise questions to be sent back to the state. Then the government has some time to reply to those questions, two months. The government sends a written document. Then the session takes place in Geneva in which the committee meets the, the state delegation that goes to Geneva. Uh, this consists of six hours of exchange in two days. Then the committee after that has a private meeting and decides to adopt a document of concluding observations, which uh, I encourage you to, to read the previous concluding observations sent, sent to other countries. It's around 12 pages document highlighting the good steps the state has taken and including several, several recommendations uh, for the state. And of course, ideally, the, those recommendations should trigger development of policies and actions by the state at the different levels, including uh, uh, municipality level, a local level, and not only the central government. Throughout this process, 
organizations of persons with disabilities at the national level are uh, welcome to participate. And now in the screen it's projected the different moments where they can participate, or where they are invited to participate. When the state is developing its initial state report, the state should consult with and actively involve the organizations of persons with disabilities. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but that's what the convention foresees. Once the state submitted its in initial report, the organizations are uh, invited to submit alternative reports, which have to include very precise and concrete information and uh, include um, proposals of topics for the committee to, to take over. Then when the committee decides that the country will pass uh, for review, which usually happens like one year and a half before, more or less, the, um, it's the organizations are invited to submit a more brief uh, document directed to that with updated information to that date and including the proposed questions that the organizations would like to see in the list of issues. Then, before the adoption of the list of issues, organizations can attend, uh, G and can go to Geneva and have one hour, one hour and a half private meeting with no state representatives with the committee only. And uh, also the occasion to have also informal meetings, uh, sometimes more extended uh, with different committee members. Then, once the government uh, receives and replies the list of issues sent by the committee, the organizations can send their own version of replies to the list of issues and react to the information provided by the state. Of course, the work needs to be anticipated and be working in advance, not to be delayed by the delay of the, uh, of the state. Then, for the session, the DPOs, the organizations have another uh, opportunity to go meet privately the committee members and then informally meet the committee members. Uh, of course, and then the concluding observations will be published by the committee and then there is the work at the national level of trying to push for their implementation. So, opportunities for organizations to, to, meet, to brief the committee face to face, private briefing before the adoption of the list of issues, private briefing prior to the dialogue between the committee and the state delegation uh, in Geneva, and informal meetings with the country reporter, which is the member of the committee in charge of the country, and informal meetings with our committee members. All this process that I described from the moment that the committee decides uh, to include the country for review takes around uh, one year, one year and a half. And then the idea is that the cycle re re repeats itself every four years. So the idea is that all, the, all this process brings information from the organizations through the submissions and their meetings, and then getting to the concluding observations uh, to the organizations for them to use at the national level. Uh, I had here some examples of uh, issues that the committee usually addressed. Uh, I believe that the, the PowerPoint will be shared, but just to mention a few on non-discrimination, the issue of uh, denial of reasonable accommodation, the issue that the law provides that denial of, of reasonable accommodation constitutes discrimination is typically one. And the Article 12, the need to modify laws that still deprive of legal capacity of persons with disabilities. Then there is a lot uh, being addressing the issue of institutionalization and forced uh, treatment and also for uh, sterilization. Sometimes, uh, and uh, there was an example in Peru, one recommendation of the committee on forced uh, sterilization made that the uh, executive branch of Peru derogate um, an administrative uh, decision that authorized it, and that was a direct consequence of this. Uh, also recommendations on DPO participation. And I skip this just to mention one last uh, set of comments. As the state still has not ratified the, the convention, uh, you have to know that there are other UN procedures, other UN human rights mechanisms that can be used to raise issues related to persons with disabilities. I would mention 
and stress very much the special rapporteur on the rights of persons with disabilities who does studies, receive individual communications, and can issue press release. I would mention as well other UN treaty bodies, and with this I finish, that address uh, issues related to the rights of persons with disabilities. I'm at your disposal for questions and answers after the, after the other colleagues present. Thank you very much.